year later and not touch it, and that oil will be ruined because you introduce acids to it. Once the acids are in there, it's going to start deteriorating the oil. You can start oxidizing the oil. Yeah, I'll send it my so oil just because you have 5,000 miles, I don't care if you have 1,000 miles. If it was from last July and you've, you've driven it since last July, I can't wait to see your sample. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I cannot wait to. And then mid flow, yeah, dip straight, in there, dip out, it. seal it's it. Like up. A year analysis almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got Kyle over here from Hot Shot. He's going to tell us uh, what's new in 2021 for Hot Shot. Our new gun oil just came out. Oh, yeah, I've been yes. seeing stuff on that. What's up, guys? Oh. Yeah, we need that. Yep. That's awesome. And that's, uh, that's you know, got some of our FR3 that you know, it goes in our oil additives. So this will clean, lubricate, and protect. Um, it's a good cleaner. And kind of got a bunch of different uh, SWAT teams use it for testing and seeing heat reduction on it uh, reduces like their jams, everything. So, oh, I was just about to ask, are y'all selling that to the government yet? <laughs> we're, we're trying to get that contract. That's good. Yeah. You know anybody <laughs> hey, dude, I, I've used a lot of CLP in my day. So. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we're really proud of that. We actually had released that once, and we had some cap issues trying to figure out how to ship these and everything, so we like pulled it for a while, and in the meantime, as we do with anything, our R&D never stops, so they're always looking to, you know, advance it. Well, we found a new a new way to bring more heat down and everything, so people think it's a re-release, but it's uh, it's actually improved, it's like all our products. If we can make them better, we make them better as we go. You mean power by science? That's right. That's my man. See? <laughs> Set the hashtag down. Yeah. Yeah. So RV line is what you guys like focusing on for, the, for this year? That's how, uh, up, up next, what's around the corner, Yeah. what's next in the lab is a whole marine line. Marine line. So uh, marine line's next, that's pretty much finished up. What's next after that? Can you tell us? Motorcycle. Motorcycle. Yeah. Wow. So we got, a, we got a whole line of motorcycle stuff coming out. And of course, we're always working with our performance side of thing. Obviously, we've got the world's fastest diesel out here. And we're working with some new teams now that are, you know, obviously Firepunk's been a big partner of ours. And uh, the performance side, we've really caught a lot of steam with lately. And some of the biggest uh, sled pulling teams, drag racing guys are now crossing over and even on the gas side of things. We've uh, really made a lot of gains in the gas racing world and uh, we're looking to expand that next year as well. So we actually use the uh, racing oil on the twin compound turbo right. on my right. and it reduced the engine tick and he said he noticed a huge improvement in the throttle response and everything. Absolutely. And he uses Schaefer's before which they make really good oil too. Yeah, and absolutely. And he, he was skeptical. He's like, can it get any better? And then he was like, holy shit, it's actually like, there's no ticking anymore. Yeah. It's yeah, really that's the nail we were getting in there. Yeah. And, and yeah, I always tell people, we, we, we test everything on the market. Yeah. We won't put anything out until we know, not only will it test better, but we can actually prove it, show it, what's side, powered by science. There you go again. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll give Schaefer's credit, like their stuff tests great. Like, yeah. We always see really good stuff with them. They're often, we go out and find the best on the market, and then we put that on the pegboard, and we don't stop till we can meet it. And to their credit, they're often at the top, and uh, but we're happy to take a step past that. So when I get a guy that's used to something like that and is happy with it, um, they're usually a hard convert or something, but when I can reduce the valve train ticking and, and everything on top of everything, it, it makes a real happy customer. And, we like to have them in the hot test family then. Yeah, and then we use the EDT on the tow truck. Okay, I'll let and actually, we average like nine miles per gallon hauling two big SEMA trucks. And I think that's because of Hot Shot's EDT. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. it always improves fuel mileage. You can tell whenever you use Hot Shot and you don't, because I've actually tracked it on fuel, fuel lead. I've had, I would do like one fuel up without Hot Shot and then one with Hot Shot. Sure. And I get at least like one to two miles per gallon difference. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's about, that's about common. You're looking at Nine miles per gallon there, so a 10% gain. We see it a lot. A lot of people uh, like to see like the one tank cleaners and everything, which is our diesel extreme. It's great to do a, a thorough cleaning with. And what happens is our customers will say, "Wow, while I was doing the clean out, the truck felt really great. It was responsive, and I got the mile per gallon gain out of it." Well, that's where the EDT comes in. Yeah. It allows you to have keep that cetane boost up in every single tank, which burns that fuel more efficiently, which. Depends how your, your right foot is. Yeah. You can either hammer on that or get the efficiency out of it. Yeah. Uh, with horsepower and fuel, fuel miles, they're all the same thing depending yeah. on how you use it. And uh, that's what ET is for. It's every tank, it's a, it's a small dosage. We don't put any filler in the product, so it's all the good stuff. 
attacks a punch and uh, gets you down the road. And I notice with EDT or Diesel Extreme, I don't roll full. I'll, I'll try to roll full, and it's like barely anything coming out. And that's that's going to be a lot of your CTA and lubricity. If any of that coal you see is wasted fuel, right? So when we don't see it, we know that uh, it's 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 efficiently burning the fuel. Just saw a video right behind you of this thing going down the track. And if you've ever seen this thing at 180 miles per hour, it's burning as clean as you can be yeah. because we're maximizing every ounce of fuel in there. We don't want to waste anything. Right. We need every ounce of that. So uh, that, that C10 boost really helps. Yeah, and then my 05 Duramax, I was having some issues where the fuel was surging. I did diesel extreme and I, after one fuel full of tank, I filled it out the next time surging was gone. Great. So yep. I, like I swear by Hot Shop. Sure. Because I've used it and it's, it's actually worked. We appreciate it. Yeah. We, 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 we love hearing that. Yeah, and I Matt, got a question. Matt yeah. Too. I had a, um, I was like, in preparation for coming out here, I went on the Hot Shop and stocked up on like EDT, LX4, and then I, I noticed that when I got the EDT bottle, I was like, oh wait, it has LX4 in it, I guess? Yeah. Can you kind of talk about that or explain that? So sure, so. So you don't need to run both? Because I saw it said you can run with other products, so sure. I assume I should, but. So traditionally, when we formulate something, we want to tackle all problems at one time. Um, some of the other lubricant companies out there have a cetane booster, have an injector cleaner, have a water disperser, have a fuel stabilizer. We put all that in one product. And we try to make it simple for the customer. So, like you're speaking on the fuel additives, when you pour it in there, well, you know you're treating the really crappy diesel fuel we have and protecting your fuel system. You don't have to worry about it, everything's in there. When the CP4 came out, and everyone started having problems with it, it really brought a lot of people into the lubricant market that maybe had never been there before. They're suddenly saying, hey, I need something. This, this dry fuel is going to be a problem for my pump, so I need to risk it. Well, that's when we made the change. We kept getting asked for the brisket, but we're like, the brisket's right there in the UDT. You can use it. And the diesel looks great. But customer education is always tough. And when you have new entrants into a market they haven't been in for with, with you know, an additive, they're looking for the brisket additive. There's some companies out there that just focus on the brisket and have done a very good job. And like I said earlier, you know, we put a marker on the board and go after it. Well, we went far past the number one brisket additive out there. Who so, was that? Who, who did it used to be? Optilus. Place to be number one. Optilus? Yeah. Never even heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought he was going to say Lucas Oil for a second time. <laughs> <laughs> but again, credit's Optilus. They make a great product, you know. Yeah. It's been number one for a long time. We just we just finally focused on it and, and got past that. So the guys looking to protect the CP4s and stuff are often going to the LX4. I tell them, while you're there, run the EDT, it's already in there. The LX4's already yeah. in there. So if you just want the Lubrisky, you can, get, you can go LX4. I prefer going to ET because you're getting all the other benefits, the cetane and, and the cleaner and the, and the water dispersion. You've got a rusted corrosion inhibitor, a fuel stabilizer. Yeah. Why not? It's about the same dosage and you get it at the same price point. Now here's the here's the, where it gets a little bit different. You can add more LX4 on top of the EDT if you want to bring that wear scar down even more. That's right. what we did. Yeah. So we were running LX4 and EDT the whole way that's, here. That's but fine. I ran out of LX4 <laughs> around uh, Flagstaff. <laughs> I know a guy. You can help me out with that. Yeah, I, I need to talk to that guy. <laughs> so that is one of the unique things about Lubristi. Like not not everything in chemistry here. We can't keep pouring cetane in. So there's a there's a uh, a point of diminishing returns yeah, there. The risk that you actually can keep gaining to a certain point. So we want to see a fuel, you know, a low, lowest fuel uh, uh, wear scar as possible. So our EDT is formulated, it has exactly enough of risk in it to bring the worst possible US fuel spec that you can get at the worst pump in America, bring it into the safe level. So you know you're at the safe level. Now, if you want to go further past that and still cut wear even more, you can top treat it with LX4 and get that wear scar even lower. That just extends the life of the, the motor that much longer. So, so we, so we're typically, you know, our, my tank is like a 36 gallon tank. I think it's one ounce for 25 gallons. Correct. And so 30, I was usually going about two ounces for the whole tank. I figured that's a little overkill. Is there such a thing as like using too much EDT? Using no, we actually have two dosages for EDT. One ounce for 25 gallons and also two ounces for 25 gallons to be a performance dose. Right. Um, 
kind of like the LX4 I just said, you're going to get a little bit more of the brisky out of it, and it'll move the cetane boost from 4 to 7 by that, so you'll get that cleaning bait burning fuel that we talked about. Um, past that, Nothing really. that you're, we're pretty much leveled off there, so okay. you're just kind of paying our bills for no reason, and, <laughs> and, and, and we have a lot of people do it. I, a funny side story I like to tell about one of our drivers, uh, Trey Sykes, uh, he, he, he used to drive the, the BMW 335D that Hot Shots had for a while there. He, we called the Trey Sykes dosage. He would put, he came to us and he said, I found the perfect mix for my fuel and really makes my race car run so good. I'm like, what are you doing? He said, I put 40 ounces of EDT on a five gallon fuel cell. I'm sitting there and doing the math. I'm like, 40 ounces on five gallon. That's a 200 times overdose. She's just running on EDT. <laughs> so to answer your question, is it bad for the system? No. He's okay, but we took that to the lab. And he's like, I'm curious how much cetane that is. Like, we took that to the lab and it measured out at like 10.3 cetane. Bum. So what that tells is the first half ounce that he poured in to that five gallon fuel cell gave him eight point cetane boost. The other 39 and a half ounces only moved in another two points. Oh wow. So we formulate right to the peak of, 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 of you know your gain. And, um, some people often think if a little bit's good, lots great. That may be the case for some companies that have a watered-down product where you don't have a full full boost. But we have zero filler in our entire lineup. So, let me so ask you this, because I just I'm just curious. I've I've only been in the diesel world six or seven years now, and um, I have a two part, two two part question. Right. First off is when did Hot Shot Seekers kind of get its start? Uh, how long have you guys been out? And then the second question is. Um, do you guys have plans to move into like more brick and mortar stores? Because I noticed on the way here, um, you can't really get EDT at AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, or Riley's. But I got saw that tractor supply, and I saw it at almost every truck stop that we went to. And I thought that was pretty cool. So, so let me ask you the second question first. Okay. You can get it at all those places. They're out of stock. Okay. We, we we just got our data back for this year. We are now the fastest growing lubricant company in America. Yeah, because I want to straight you guys. <laughs> our, our, our retail uh, has been off the charts where all the retailers, they can't keep up with the demand. So okay. we're in all those stores you just said. <laughs> with EDT, I actually was down in Florida a couple weeks ago and I was doing a, uh, a dyno test and I did not, I flew in there and I had product so I would I had to go to three stores to find my product. I'm like, I know you guys carry it and I asked the guys, they're like, yeah, we just sell it so fast, we have to wait till the next week to come in. So that's a good and bad problem that we're having right that's now. That's kind of what you want to hear, but. <laughs> right, but yeah, I know yeah, we can yeah. sell it more, right? Um, uh, and secondly, we got, a, we got a full dealer network too, independent dealers, and they have access to our full lineup, whereas Retail is tough to get a lot of products in. You know, it takes a while to review it once a year. Our independent dealer network has access to our full line. So I often tell people, go to our webs, go to our website, hotshotsecret.com. You can plug in your zip code, and you can find a local dealer near you. That you know, and I like to support small small business too. You know, and uh, if they don't care, you can ask them. They'll, they'll stock it, and then we can get we can get them in there for them. So to answer the first question. What was that? Who, who are we? Where we come from? No, not, not, yeah, like how long have you guys been around? Like where well, where'd you guys get your starts at? Our, our parent company name is Lubrication Specialties. Uh, it was founded by Chris Kabrelchek, who's still our current owner. We're a private company. He is a tribologist, which basically means he's an oil nerd. He used to work for, uh, uh, he'd find problems in big industry and develop a grease to make a bearing go farther and, uh, you know, and come evaluate big, big kind of stuff like that and really had no headway into automotive until Ford started having the six liter Huey injector issue and that's why Ford reached out to him and said hey can you develop something they were looking for any anybody to help right. them he developed our stiction eliminator which was our first product and our flagship product and that was the tested by Ford and International and they had the, the, the Huey injector problem fixed nine out of ten of them and they were like we got the fix. Well, Chris is a little guy out of Ohio. He had five and a, five or six kids at the time, and it's a one-man show working out of a van. And he thought he hit it. He's like, "Man, I'm going to get this Ford contract." Well, they stopped making the engines out there, oh, yeah. and uh, he was left kind of high and dry. So he's like, "I got this great product. I spent two years developing it. It got tested by Ford. There's a million of those trucks out there. I'm going to try to take it to market." So he he was a hustler. He went out. I mean, he would stock fuel pumps and. And find six O's and 
and uh, and and at the time, this is down. This is during the Katrina disaster when they yes, were yeah. hot shotting all the, uh, the the FEMA trailers down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those were all six O's there. You know, that's that's that was the market. So that's why he named it Hot Shot Secret. It was to get those I was hot like, shots. Did it come from racing or did it come from actually hot shots? No, it's for hot shotters. And at the time, that was what the product was called. He called the product Hot Shot Secret. And then uh, once it once it got picked up by tractor supply and started exploding and he changed the company name to hot shot secret and then we just started releasing products one after another after that just following problem specific solutions and staying in our lane of not making any commodity products you know you'll never see us make like a like a brake fluid or something or but if there's something that we can improve on and make the best on the market we'll attack the problem and energy go after drinks. it energy drinks i haven't heard that one yet <laughs> i'm telling you you need it we could try that. Lubricate the hell out of your system. <laughs> <laughs> we could try that. Right? I mean, that's a good idea. I like it. Just put that's my awesome. name on the logo. There you go. <laughs> JW's Hot Shot Energy Drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, with the sticks and eliminator, should Duramax guys use it too? Or is it just strictly for Ford? Thing? It is strictly for any engine on Earth. Okay. It was originally developed for the Huey injectors. Yeah. But, you know, and we kind of get pigeonholed into being a diesel company sometimes. We got products for gas as well. And then that product gets even pigeonholed into a six liter diesel yeah. you know, product. But truth of the matter is, the tolerances in a Huey injector are so tiny that make that you know pin fire on the fuel side of it that this product can get in there and clean it out. With the, and we do it all with group five esters, uh, no harsh cleaners, you know, it's all lubricated at the same time. It's so like I tell everybody, if it's so good to get in that tiny injector and clean it out, yeah. it's going to clean up the normal inside of any engine. Yeah. So I put it in gas engines. I put it. Yeah. I put a little bit in my lawnmower. I've been giving that to like everybody, all my friends. Like we did it on the dually right before we got here, or like last uh, oil change when we did it. No, we did it when we it first got. Yeah, when we first got. It, yep. just to clean it out. Good way to do a clean out. Yep. Yeah, I had the five. We were out there with a five. I had. I ordered a five gallon bucket, a five yeah. gallon can of the oil. And I'm trying to like, we're trying to like, no. how do we <laughs> figure out how to get it? How do we do this? Right. <laughs> so we were pouring it into smaller court and then dumped it in. Right, yep. Yeah. yeah, this way to do it though, you start, stick some in there, so you step one, get everything cleaned out. After that, you can switch over to our FR3 for the next couple changes. That's what I was just about to ask. Or if you're uh, using our oil, our FR3 is already infused into it, so you're good to go. Yep. Oh, okay, so I'm already running. Yep. So, what about, so with the FR3, I noticed it's a one, like one ounce, Per quart ratio, you're, you're doing pretty good. One and a half ounces per quart. One and a half ounces. Actually, per you want to know it's off the record? It's actually one point six ounces per quart, but uh, yeah. we say one and a half because people are. So is that, that. do I replace that much? Of, do I replace that much oil with that? Correct. Okay. Correct. So if your total comes out so that you're going to be putting sixteen ounces in based on your measurement, that's sixteen ounces less oil. That's a good way. You believe it or not, that is the number one question we get all the time. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. Even when we were doing the Stiction Eliminator, I was like, are we doing this on top of the oil, or is this like, we gotta you know, subtract from the oil? You know, like Normally when I, when I do it myself, I'll pour half the oil in, add my proper amount of additive, and then just yeah. top oh, to your dipstick sense. level. That's just I didn't even think about doing it like that. No, no. that's a good idea for next time. Yep. I'm going to need another oil change as soon as we get back home. Yeah. Well, I know a guy. <laughs> oh, I know a guy too. It's already sitting in my garage. The other two and a half gallons. Of it. It's already sitting in there. <laughs> yeah, but well, we've been using the crap out of Hot Shot on the dually, especially because we don't know how the previous owner took care of it. Yeah. So we want it to be as reliable as possible. So when we got it, we're like, we're going to Hot Shot everything. <laughs> yep. Well, that's what I always recommend when you get a new used car. Uh, any vehicle, you, you never know what the last guy did. Yeah. So, first or thing, didn't do. Tr true. First thing I do on every single thing I get is, is three clean outs. I do the fuel tank clean out with diesel extreme or gasoline extreme. We got a gasoline extreme product as well. On the engine, I clean out with stick cylinder right away. And on the transmission, we have ship restore. It used to be called transmission sticks. I need to use that because my L my O5 is starting to slip a little bit. People people forget about the transmission when they start, you know, cleaning this stuff out. And um, I highly recommend the ship restore. It is a great product. It's a it's a I like to say it's our only additive that's not an additive. Um, it is a one chemical product. It only has a one group five ester in it. It's just a really high end group five ester. It's polarized, so when it gets into your transmission fluid. 
it'll get into all the small tolerance of your, of your valve body and everything, and it, it wants to fight and get to the metal to bond. Yeah. So any burnt, coke, coked up uh, transmission fluid in there, it pulls it off the metal and returns it to fluid form, so it can be uh, changed out with your next transmission change. Yeah, it's really cool how like all your stuff actually works. It's the yes, yeah, really like. Do you think maybe with one day we could show up to your factory and like kind of see how everything is? Yeah, done? we'd love to have you. All right, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we like, do I everything. See the science behind it. We do everything in house. You know, that's what's yeah. very unique about our company is we do our own R and D, we do our own testing, yeah. blending, bottling, packaging, everything that we sell worldwide comes right out of our location in Mount Gilead, Ohio. So, so you can see from the lab all the way to the truck. That is, we live off that. Okay. We wish everybody in the world would do more oil sampling because, you know, especially in our oil world, a lot of people kind of kind of see it like. How's your oil doing for you? The average person's like, well, I don't know, it's kind of working. You don't really know. Yeah, that's, at that's at the, the end of the day, part. every engine slowly eats itself till it dies. That may last 100,000, may last 500,000. But day one, you're starting to wear that engine down. Now, if we can measure how much you're wearing that engine down, and then I can show you with an analysis that switching over, adding FR3 to the oil is gonna reduce your wear. We've got to prove it by 42%. We did a test with Rotella. So baseline test, Ran it for a thousand miles, saw how much metal was in there. Joey's gonna have some. And then added FR3 to the oil, and the, the metal count was reduced by 42%. But when you're cleaning a sticks and eliminator, this is why sticks and eliminator is cool. It's doing that deep cleaning, but it's also lubricating and protecting at the same time. That has a 60% wear reduction. So you're effectively, if you have that in your engine from day one, you go buy a brand new vehicle and put FR3 in day one, you effectively will double the lifespan of that engine. So if somebody like me... And that's proven needs, with the test. The average end user needed to get a hold of you guys to figure out how to get samples to you. That's, how do they go about that? We sell them. Oh, we go. do them at cost. We don't make any money off these. And it's it's, it's real simple to do. They come with a prepaid postage. Don't pee in it. Um, <laughs> no, we'll, yeah. we'll find it in the sample. <laughs> and it just has a simple form in here that allows you to fill out you know what type of oil you're using how many miles are on it and so forth this will come to the lab they'll run the analysis we can check everything from is the viscosity holding is it still um, at the correct viscosity it, we spot things like glycol and it's like hey you got a head gasket about to go yeah. we've been seeing that with a lot of the new rams and guys that are just doing their first or second oil changes and want to get an oil sample and we have to call them back and say we're spotting glycol in there go to the dealership sure enough to go to the dealership head gas before it went. You can save people a lot of money. Yeah, so that, I, yeah, you can save tons of money. And something like this costs like 20 bucks. That's uh, postage included. Once you run the test, one of our tribologists will actually contact the customer, walk them through the oil analysis, explain it to them. And the more knowledge you have, the more power you have, you know? And then also, also it, it, it's great to people that, the doubters out there, yeah. this is how we prove it with our science. Like, give me a before, use my product, and give me an after. And, and then, then the both near court. You can decide how much wear you need, you know? Yeah, I mean, for each person, depending on the use of the vehicle, conditions, where they're <coughs> hauling or just driving every day, is going to tell them how their oil is doing throughout the process. Check it out. 1,000 miles, 2,000 miles. For some people, they may need faster changes because you're hauling for 2,000 miles versus just city driving for 2,000 miles. Absolutely. It makes a complete difference on how that oil is going to 100%. And, that's, and that comes down when people will ask, off, I get the question all the time when we're discussing of all the oils we offer, what's good for them? And I can't answer that question. I'm like, well, tell me more about how you use your truck. You know, it's like uh, 5,000 miles is not 5,000 miles to everybody. There might be hundreds of idle time hours on that. There might be towing on that. There might be some racing on that. So, or it just might be grocery store, you know? So there's no, anybody that tells you exactly how long an interval you can get out of any oil is guessing. Analysis is what we show. And then what we'll see on that, we always want to look right away you're going to have Anytime you turn that engine on, even with fresh oil, you're introducing acids into the oil. We got bases in our in the oil fighting the acids. So it's a constant battle of having the detergent to protect the engine from, from when it happens. So we'll we'll see an analysis exactly the, the TBN, which we got a product called the TBN Booster, which is unique. If you look how thick this stuff is. Yeah, I can see it on top. Like cost syrup, bro. Molasses. <laughs> it is. Molasses. So what this is... That's the energy drink. Diesel molasses. This is probably the, the unsung hero of the company. Nobody knows anything about this product. It's a really rare, unique product. Wow. And the way I like to explain it is, if you took oil 
our really good oil and stripped all the base oil out of it and just had the the really good uh, I like to call it like the Kool-Aid powder. Yeah. I took all the water out. This is the powder. This is what you can make a bunch of gallons of really good oil out. And the reason why we have this product is because it comes down to oil analysis and long intervals and our bypass filters. So the guys that want to go long intervals can run our group four oils, which analysis will show will always stay in grade. So if you're running a 40 weight, no matter what you're doing to it, it's going to hold the grade. We want to keep it clean, so we run a bypass filter, which is going to strain the oil down to two microns and keep it clean. And then lastly, the one thing that we can't affect is you're slowly going to use up the detergent in your oil. So we put this product out to allow those guys to put, and there's a chart on here that will let you know how many numbers you need to come up. It may be four ounces, maybe six ounces, and that brings your detergent package back up. We send them back out for another 20,000 miles, and we'll test again then. We got trucks going 100,000, 200,000 miles on the same oil drum without changing. So the reality is, in order to really make this effective, oil sampling is absolutely necessary. Well, key. You guys can tailor to that particular drive. Absolutely, that that's awesome. Even in our in our in our motorsports world, with like the high performance stuff, a big question is, well, how many passes can I make on this racing oil before I have to change it? We'll dial it in for them because we we can see the actual. Because again, even every race truck or pulling truck is is different. So. We'll see how the metal count is, how your particle count is in the wear. We'll take it to a safe level, and I can tell a driver after three or four oil samples, once we start to get a trend line, you can go 22 passes, you can go 42 passes, you can go 17 passes. And it allows people to feel comfortable knowing that they're getting the most out of their oil, not wasting any oil, getting every dollar out of it, but also uh, keeping it protected. It goes same for your daily driver. I don't want you to change an oil of 3,000 or 5,000 or 7,000 if it's perfectly good. Yeah. People always say to us, but you're an oil company. Don't you want to sell all the it, oil to them? It's money in your pocket. It's not. It's not. It's it's not. not. And, and that's how our owner, he wants to educate people on That's why we sell bypass filters and put this out at cost. Let's, let's, let's make people understand what they can get out of their oil and protect their investment. You know? That's awesome. I can do that. I'm going to try with a dually when we get back. I do. I definitely We're, we're going to send you some samples see, for I mean, sure. I one of the best bets is to right. get a good sample on it and then see where it's at. And that'll kind of help to dial in where it needs to be. Yeah. It's a really good example of a trip right now hauling 20,000 pounds while I'm on. Do you guys have any other trucks that we call virgin trucks because they haven't had FR3 yet? L5B. Right. Yeah. All, actually, all of One, the two, L5B. Yeah. There's three L5B standing right in front of you. <laughs> See, the problem is, not the problem, the good thing is, is the FR3 stays in the engine. Yeah. So once you introduce an engine to our FR3, it's in there. So we actually haven't even been able to figure out how long. You can go with another oil and not add our FR3. It stays bonded for, we think, at least two to three oil cycles. That's crazy how it just bonded out. It's, it's, by, it's through polarity. It's, it's basically heat activated and polarity infused. So it's going to find all the hot spots, as we call them, which are your real tight tolerances in the engine. And that's where the smallest tolerance is where your most wear is. And it wants to run there and bond to that surface and protect it. Um, and it stays there. So if you do have one that hasn't been introduced to our oil or FR3 yet, save that one because we'll do it before or after. Oh, let's Perfect. do it. Yeah. So, what so I the one do outside, is, mine has I need one of those bottles. And I'll send you. I'll uh, send you guys that, and we can. We'll do it with all the 2020s, all the yeah, LIVs. Yeah, because you've done hot shots. So, yeah, yeah Donnie, done hot Donnie shots in there. And probably got the most miles, right? How yeah. many miles does your truck have? Seventeen thousand. Mine has got 30, 37, 38. Yeah, Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Ah, you got the most. <laughs> <laughs> See, but like Donnie does all the driving from like Jersey to Georgia. So yep. He does like all the. And I haven't changed the oil since the last time I went to Georgia. It's been a couple months. Yeah. So I guess yeah. that's what we'll do. Yeah, I, I love I love finding, like you say, virgin vehicles because it's the perfect base to show how testing works, mm -hmm. and it's a way that this is how we prove our products. You know, I I, I can talk about it every, every all day, but everybody talks and thinks the product's great, right? I like to show. Yeah. So I think let's let's good, put it on. Three different yeah. trucks with three completely different conditions. What yep. will yeah. yeah. show the difference I use between? Dello. I don't know how even. <laughs> it's going to show the difference of how you have to tune particular to each truck. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Did. What oil did you use? You've only done one oil change at 17,000 miles. See? You might be just fine. See what you're thinking now? Yeah. You're already making intervals for him. We don't know. Yeah. Let's well, test it finally. Well, like, it may be too hard. I didn't drive my truck for six months. That's true. And then, like, when I started driving it, like, like late last year, it was like, okay, time to change the mind. No, I changed When it. was it that it was changed? 
You know what? I think I changed, the last time I changed my oil was right before I lifted it last July. Oh my I don't think I've changed my oil since July. Oh man. His fuel filters need to be changed too. But, the, yeah. but okay, like the, so look. The, the oil calculator hasn't told me like, hey, you because can change your oil, the, bro. Because the oil calculator is a very it. dumb animal. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it reset it though because you had the batteries disconnected. No, it's just connected to mileage. Oh, okay. They're not that intelligent. They, those things are do not go by those. So you remember I told you how the, the moment you start your engine with the oil in there, you introduce acid. You could literally you could literally change the oil in your truck, go drive it around the block, park it, and a year later not touch it, and that oil would be ruined because you introduce acids to it. Once the acids are in there. It's going to start deteriorating the oil. You can start oxidizing the oil. Yeah, I'll send it my so oil just because you have five thousand miles, I don't care if you have one thousand miles. If it was from last July and you've, you've driven it since last July, I can't wait to see your sample. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I cannot wait to send this one in. See, like, right I'm not now, going to change the oil in it either. I'm so like, my oil gauge is at zero percent, but like, I'm not even worried. I mean, I know I'm going to do an oil change when I go back, but I'm like, I'm not worried. I'm like, I'm using hot shot oil, so like. Yeah, well, I, know, I know I got way more intervals than like regular. The I think this is going to be a good sample. So obviously, when you throw the again, in the mix, honestly, it's going to be a really good. That's sample. where that weird product, the TVN booster, comes in. That's the second use for it. Uh, like again, it's it's made to like it, you know re rejuvenate your oil of all the good you know uh, nutrients, let's say, uh, to go those long intervals. But also, I kind of consider it like a no shit bottle too. You keep it in the truck. A lot of our hot shotters that are like maybe a thousand miles from home. They'd rather change oil back to their shop, you know, than be on the road through due. Yeah. Pour a little in just for a safe measure, you know, so you get your jerky back it up, get that extra oh, interval. Yeah, see, so if you're yeah. running late on I'm your interval. I'm down to like 30% on the oil, like based on the calculator. Oh, dude, you need some right now. Trust yeah. me. If it's from last July, you already need some. No, 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 on the tow pig. We, told, we, told, we oh. changed the oil in the tow pig like right, two months. weeks before we came out here. Sure, and like, because of the trip out here, it's like, yeah. it's already down to and 30%. And pulling two trucks, yeah. right? Yeah. Two yeah. trucks, 44 yeah. goose So two 9,000 pound trucks and 7,000. Well, yeah. Come see me on Friday. We'll make sure you can take our display bottles home because they may need okay. that for the trip home. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I'll throw some TV in it for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Big. Oh, man. That's a big load, man. Yeah. Jeez. We may or may not be over the tolerance. Over, say nothing. over the limit, shut up, dude. <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah. We do get asked that a lot. So like, you know, how do you actually take an oil sample? We want a really clean sample. So first of all, clean around your, if you're taking it during an oil change, clean up around that, that, that yeah. oil pan nut first, you know, right. so you don't get any debris coming out. Also do it with a warm engine. Because if, if your truck's been sitting there for a day and you're coming out the next day to do the oil change on it, you've got sediment that's now settled down to the bottom of the oil pan. And if you take a sample right there, it's gonna give you a false read of, you know, a really high particle count or something. So get that oil flowing, get a little warm, warm enough that you don't burn yourself, but you know, get it, get it flowing, cut her off, pull that plug, let it drain about halfway, I like to get it moving, and then mid-flow, yep, dip in there, dip Take out, it. seal Just it like up. your analysis almost. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Catch the stream. Catch the stream. There now you what go. you don't do, what you don't do, this happens a lot too, is they drop the oil and they go, oh man, I, I, I told Kyle I was going to say I'm sampling. Don't, go, don't, don't go pull it out of the pan. Yeah. Remember, we're measuring parts per million. Okay. Or the other thing is they'll say, oh, I'll just get it out of the oil filter. Point out, don't do that because that's got all the nasty stuff in there. So be smart, remember ahead of time. Catch the stream. Catch the stream. <laughs> cool.